What's going on everybody, Ian here for Cult of Mac, and with Apple slowly turning up the dial on what iOS can do to be more like a computer, it seemed only fitting that we take a look at the Files app in iOS 13, as it's one of the big changes that's going to make it possible to do more computer-like tasks on iOS and on the iPad. With iOS 13, the Files app on iPhone and iPad is taking a huge leap forward, moving closer toward the Mac-style file management system, with a bunch of small changes and some major ones that are really going to reshape how the Files app works for those power users who rely on the Files app and rely on files to get work done. First off, and possibly most importantly, the Files app now supports external storage devices like flash drives and external hard drives. In fact, I've even seen some people post videos online connecting things like a zip disk or a jazz drive. Older iPads or any iPad that's using a lightning port to charge will require Apple's USB 3 to lightning cable, which basically allows it to provide enough power to the iPad and the USB device while also connecting the USB device to make your USB external drive, whatever, work on your iPad. Where the newer iPad Pros, you can connect through the USB port using either USB cable or USB adapter of some sort to go to USB, and they can provide enough power for those USB devices to work, assuming they don't require external power. Once connected, your external media should show up in the Files app, allowing you to access those files, throw them into other applications and work on them, or move them either to cloud services or to your iPad's local storage to work on later without the flash drive attached. Having external storage support was one of the biggest requests iOS and specifically iPad users have had for quite a while. Having the ability to access files and use them in different apps whenever they need makes the iPad way more useful as a productivity tool. Another big change in iOS 13 that's most evident in the Files app is the fact that you can now use your iPad's local storage, the storage you rightfully paid for, to store files and documents and different types of content. This is also really convenient, again, if you're the type of creative who wants to do work in different apps on your iOS device, you have the ability to put those files on the device, use them without having to go through the Photos app or through a cloud storage provider to get those files on your iPad. The Files app also has a couple new options when browsing your files, as well as a new info panel that gives you access to a ton of really useful features and some really useful information. One of the main things is the new three column view, which comes straight from macOS, allowing you to see files and folders within the structure of your local storage, your cloud storage, or your external media storage. So you can see what folder you're in, what subfolder you're in, and then what file it is you're looking at within that structure, making it really fast and easy to grab a bunch of files, move them around or move them up or down a storage tree. So you can make things more organized and more clearly laid out without needing to constantly jump back and forth through the different tile or list views. Now when using that new three column view, tapping on any individual file will bring up the new info panel, which is also brand new in iOS 13. That info panel gives you information like when a file was created, the type of file it is, where it exists in your file structure, as well as access to a couple new quick actions for things like marking up a document or converting it to a PDF. And at the same time, if you long press in any other view, you can choose info. You can get that same information. And if you select multiple files of a compatible format, you can even create a PDF out of those files, which is something that used to be reserved for specific custom workflows instead of being built into the Files app. One other big feature in Files in iOS 13 is the ability to compress a whole bunch of files into a zip archive, making it super convenient, super easy to move those files in bulk to a cloud storage or send them off in an email or do something that requires multiple files to go to one place and be accessible as a bundle in another location. Again, this is another one of those features that existed in shortcuts before, but now is built straight into the Files app allowing you to take one or a group of files or a group of folders or a mix of files and folders and long press and choose compress and it will turn it into a zip archive within that folder structure, allowing you to move it where you need to and do with it what you need. Another feature coming to iOS 13 in the Files app is the ability to access SMB servers. Now this is something that's huge for tech nerds and enterprise customers especially, where they have their own kind of a local version of a cloud storage through an SMB server. Now with the Files app, you'll be able to connect to those SMB servers, access those files, use them in apps, or move them around just as you would on a Mac or Windows PC. This is a huge upgrade because you won't need any third-party software or 
weird cloud storage hacks, you can access them on your iOS device. Outside of that, the Files app is pretty much what you expect. A cloud storage and local storage file browser that allows you to access files and use them in apps as you need. It still supports drag and drop, it still keeps its same place in the share sheet, and it's still accessible throughout the system for allowing you to do more computer-like things and use your iPad or your iPhone as a computer replacement if the need fits. Let me know what you think of the changes coming to the Files app down below, and also let me know if there's any features you'd like me to cover in these last couple of weeks as we lead up to the official release of iOS 13. Also, while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And until next time, I'm Ian for Cult of Mac, and I'll catch you in the next one.